We all know what we want. We want to live in a country that is safe. A country that is free from corruption, where our cost of living is manageable, and where all our needs are met. The Government Transformation Program, or GTP, was developed solely to improve service delivery to the people. What is it, and how does it affect us? The GTP is a broad-based roadmap aimed at addressing key areas of concern to all Malaysians while moving the country forward in its journey to become an advanced and united nation with improved standards of living for all, all of which are efforts that are in line with our Vision 2020. The GTP is centered on the priorities that matter most to the Rakyat. It also drives fundamental changes on a nationwide basis to deliver big, fast results. To achieve these objectives, several National Key Results Areas, or NKRAs, that are constantly expanding in order to meet our needs are conceived. Here are some of the NKRAs that are already taking place within Malaysia. Reducing Crime NKRA Since its implementation up till September 2011, street crime in Malaysia has dropped 40.6%, while index crime dropped 9.8%. This makes our neighborhoods safer for families and their children to play, grow up, and live in. The Fighting Corruption NKRA includes the Whistleblower Protection Act. This act encourages whistleblowers to come forward and report any improper conduct by granting them protection of their identity. Since 2010, close to 600 corruption offenders have been listed in the name and shame database of convicted offenders allowing for more Malaysians to view the government's fight against corruption as effective. Next is Improving Rural Basic Infrastructure NKRA. Under this area, up till September 2011, over 56,000 households were able to experience having a clean water supply. Over 34,000 households received 24-hour electricity. Over 26,000 houses were built and restored for the rural poor and over 1,300 kilometers of rural roads were laid nationwide. In total, the lives of over 2 million Malaysians have been touched. Tired of the road congestion? Say no more. Since the introduction of Improving Urban Public Transport NKRA, a diversion of over 500 express buses from the city center daily has helped to decongest Kuala Lumpur. 634 bus stops around Klang Valley were refurbished, and there has been more than a 2 million increase in LRT ridership for the Kalana Jaya line, with the addition of new four-car train sets. Raising Living Standards of Low-Income Households, NKRA, has successfully reduced as many as 44,643 extreme poor households to 0% in 2010. Various training programs are available through One Azam to ensure that this group stays out of poverty. As of 31st October 2011, there are more than 50,000 One Azam participants throughout Malaysia. To date, close to 3,000 women entrepreneurs have been trained and have now reached a net income of 3,500 ringgit per month, an increase of 78.6% from previous income. Under the Improving Student Outcomes NKRA, individual primary and secondary school performances have been tracked to ensure the development of quality schools for students. 52 schools were also selected to Malaysia's first ever high performing schools list, while more than 720,000 preschoolers in the 4 plus and 5 plus age groups have benefited from early education with the addition of more than 2,500 new preschools built nationwide. The latest and 7th NKRA, which is Cost of Living NKRA, looks into easing Rakyat's burden in overcoming the increase in cost of living. It focuses on solutions that provide immediate relief measures to families in need, reduces transport and food costs, offers affordable quality housing, as well as healthcare through government clinics. So to recap, there are several elements that are currently parked under the GTP. The GTP is designed to help us reduce crime, fight corruption, improve rural basic infrastructure and urban public transport, raise living standards of low-income households, improve student outcomes and address the cost of living.
So why GTP? With the initial successes of these areas clearly improving the quality of our lives and the government's continued efforts to meet our needs, the question should be, why not?